kerosene has ran out at the uh, holiday let typical people in this weekend um, the electric is heating the water now which is really slow and takes a bit longer so we're going to get some kerosene out of the old tank here that we used to use when we used to heat the house with kerosene before we got the biomass boiler in there's still a bit of spur in there put it in this tank take it up fill it up and then it, it should keep them there uh, keep the hot water running a bit quicker typical though isn't it like our best laid plan today was just to get spraying a uh, liquid fertilizer on the rape and now we're messing around with this i knew it'd come in handy that spare fuel it's taken ages to fill up look what's arrived and it's a signed copy unfortunately he's actually put my name in it so i can't sell it for a profit on ebay but thanks anyway tom for signing it don't forget available in all good bookshops roundabout update we have some cones still don't know why because I think it is supposed to be finished. It's uh, what, nearly 18 months in the making. Not very big for the like wagons and tractors. But at least we've not got to go miles around the block anymore. So it turns out it hadn't run out of fuel. When Rob looked in the tank, he thought he was looking at the bottom, but it's because it was so clear. Really, it was the electrode in there was rubbing against the side of the burner and arcing out so wasn't sparking so we've basically messed around getting some fuel up here and a thought lift to put it all in for no reason i'll just get the mini merlot it's not going to hitch on this one so i'm just going to push this trailer back a little bit and i can get some liquid fur out of these tanks so i've just got the fork underneath the drawbar and just wheel it nice and slow hopefully and then um oh it's going on its own I've just blocked Sam's tractor and I think, unless he can get out. Can he get out? Yeah, he'll get out around now. Put the air brakes back on. There we go. Happy days. Elliot's new digger's arrived. It's an Atachi and it's got a blade on it, which is an absolute beast. Because it means if you crap at digging, you can get yourself level or you can doze stuff flat with it. Uh, he's also got a steel wrist on it which means you can pivot stuff. Oh, it's a steel wrist quick hitch. I don't quite know, actually. It's got, it's got all the rollers on the thing. I think the other half of it's not here. Looks smart though. That, uh, that looks like it's off a bus though. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit special, the uh, M rails. Got my oil spray gun, got the Bateman, got its airline out, and I'm gonna spray the booms with some light oil because I'm going to put a liquid fertilizer on. And no matter how good your sort of your leak off points are, you still get drips coming out of these nozzles, dripping onto here, dripping onto there, and getting into all the nooks and crannies. And then it just starts to eat your paint over time. So I want to keep it looking new for as long as possible. So I'm gonna spray it all with oil, even the bits where the booms fold up hopefully it'll protect it a bit look horrendous because all the dust or dirt will stick to it but i'd sooner that than it start eating the paintwork probably would have been better if it had, if it had been washed and dried first but i'll just try and get it into all the nooks and crannies uh, it's not coming out the best or the paint's a bit the oil's a little bit thick but i'll get it in all these corners where stuff can hide and Start to rust can start to set in. Just made it with uh, spread it with a mixture of oil and diesel because it wasn't giving me the finest of spray patterns, just just hydraulic oil. So it's nicely uh, stinking now, but hopefully it'll protect it. This is the three-inch fast fill pump, but the tank can't do one hand. The tank is only a two-inch tank. We've got an adapter, three to two, so we'll stick that on and then we'll fill it up. It won't be as fast as through three inch, but it'll be pretty quick. There we go, it's filling up now. Through this hydraulic paste pump. This little boat there spinning, spinning that, and it goes straight through this pipe work. Rather than going through what would be the normal piston pump, 
anyone spot what's missing on the sprayer. Right, we're going from spray nozzles now to line two, which is the fertilizer jets, and then we want 235 liters. So there we go, all set now for liquid fur. Let's go. Not sure if you can see the streams flowing down out of the nozzles. Is it too bumpy? Yeah, this is just starting to come into flower here. The other bit's in flower a bit. But well, it's desperate for water, really. This is pigeon damage. This is where the gas gun is over there. Guess really we should have had two on here. I don't even want to try and guess how much pigeons cost me each year, but I reckon I could probably employ someone full time just to go around shooting them. And I still don't think they'd get around half the fields. This bit of the field was where we didn't zoom out to see what difference it would make. And because we couldn't consolidate it after rolling, the slugs basically ate it and then the pigeons finished it off. So it is so poor. So it just shows you there that on our soils, we do need to move a bit of soil so that we can get consolidation around them oilseed rape seeds so that they grow because slugs are such a weed a burden. We did try with the claden a few years running, putting rape in and we couldn't get it to grow after the claden and it's because we couldn't consolidate around the seed. And the only way we can do that is make a bit of crumb in the top, whether that's lightly dissed or sumo, because obviously the sumo is his legs with, with discs on the top. But yeah, this, this big burr patch on this heavier ground up here hasn't worked at all. The other end of the field is a little bit different soil, it's not too bad, but on certain soil types, we've, we've got to move soil to establish oil seed rape. Unless we put it in and we just get some gentle rain the next week after it, and then some nice warm conditions and no slug burden. Just coming into flower there, but at this end, where the pigeons are hiding, it's the arm, but it's a bit feeble, need air arms. They are here because I've seen them landing as I was folding the boom out. See them still landing in now. Hopefully, there we go. The mess they've made here, still grazing it. Now we're talking proper field up to the bumper, booms high, perfect crop. This one was the first we drilled. First one we drilled, we put a little bit of starter fur with it, it got up and away, the pigeons half left it alone, the geese might have hit it a little bit over here but we can't really see that yet, but hopefully this should do okay. Actually this bit here now, this is where the geese were eating it. It's recovered pretty well. It's a little bit later stage, so it's a bit more deeper yellow flowers because they're nearly going off over that side of the field. But yeah, it looks pretty well. I've just jumped off the sprayer to show you how high the oil seed rape is. So there's the bonnet there, it's up the bumper. It's up the windscreen a little bit. That is why the steps fold up here. So they don't get dragged down by the crop or knock it over. And then if I flick the camera, I think this bit is actually, it's actually bigger than me. I just wish all the oil seed rape looked like this because we've still got some that's like that high. I mean, the field we were in, was it on Monday? That was only like two inches high. It's not like we've got a bit of, bit of something there though, a bit of a disease in it maybe, some sort of aphid. Just like a little tiny patch just here randomly. I don't know why that is, I can't see it anywhere else through the crop. Even though the bait now is relatively good ground clear, as you can see, it pushes it down going through the crop. But it does spring back up again. It's on the mud guards off as well, so it doesn't flatten it. So that grey horrible thing around some of the pods is aphids. I've sent a picture to Paul and then Googled it. Nothing we can do about it. They suck the sap out of it. Hopefully it won't affect the yield too much and they won't get any worse. It's just annoying though, because this is like my best field. And now I feel like there's something in it now, eating it. So we have to keep our fingers crossed that they don't do too much damage. 
This is the other end of the field from where I found that sort of like aphid infestation, which is right over there by the tree. So luckily, most of the field is okay. I'm just going back across the field now, I've finished at the wrong end. Anyway, I've just scanned that, which you can do now yourself or screenshot or whatever, or take a picture of your teammate. You would not believe how much the goodie bag is now up to. It's just mental how generous people are. It's brilliant, so thank you for the air ambulance. I think it's got another few days to go, but it's definitely worth a look at to see what it's like. I'll, um, I'll put this up again, so if you want to pause it. No, I won't. sorry, I'll just put it at the end again. Just at Brook House and um, there's another hen party going out now. I think they've hired a stretched plumber. This field, pigeons are in it. So it's nice and yellow at the other end. We're still grazing this bit here. Fertiliser factory update. I bet you it's still closed. Um, where is it? Oh, it's there. <laughs> Look in the wrong place. Yep, nothing happening there. It's actually a shame Neil Parrish has resigned because uh, he was only one of the ones that tackled Boris Johnson on making sure them fertiliser factories were up and running. But uh, he was obviously looking at the wrong kind of tractor pawn on his phone. So he has now, now resigned from Parliament, which is a shame because he was, um, he was a farmer and he knew about agricultural things and it was good to have someone with his input in the House of Commons, but anyway, so where the cookie crumbles. There's a black cat running down there and then all them pigeons have just took off. So hopefully, uh, that's a, is it lucky to see a black cat? I just wish it would eat some of the pigeons. They're just, look at them all, they're all trying to land again. Hopefully this will make it taste not nice. Could have landed right in front of me. Should have gone that way into them woods as well. I definitely need uh, horns on this. Something tells me we're going to have to cut this field in two halves. That half about a month before this half. Now, this is the field that we put the kites in, and at least the pigeons have had the decency to graze this one completely even so hopefully when it all comes into flower it'll all be at the same level and we'll be able to combine it properly and also we can see but we've got spots of rain on the window which is really good we're supposed to get a few mil of rain overnight which will really help and wash some of the fur in that i'm putting on and the, and the prills from the other week as well and hopefully things will start growing a bit quicker now like i said yesterday i've got loads of footage from class so here's a little bit about the parts department this is the parts hq for class we have a shelf of horse parts. They once told me that you've got every part here for every combine you've sold in the UK in the last 10 years. Is that still the case? It wouldn't be every single part. Oh, you've let me know. You spoil the video. Something like, I mean, I'll tell you, 90 something percent service rate. So you can't stock every part because not every part needs replacing. And if you sell one part every 10 years, there's not a point in keeping no. it on the shelf. Could, could but we have to guarantee a supply of parts for machines for so many years after the machine's finished production. Could you fly yeah. a part in from Germany pretty quickly? If you have yeah, to? yeah, like yeah. 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 All the glass. Oh look, they have a little pulleys from inside the track units. Most important as well, uh, pedal tractors. So if you bend your auger, you've got one on the shelf. More glass windscreens. They must be front windscreens because they're massively curved. New APSs. The windscreen of combine, I think. Oh, 
And then them big boxes are empty by the looks of things. I think they're just for show. And have an extra four coming in at harvest to cover an 89 hour working week. How many staff do you have then in the summer? Yeah, yeah. How many staff in the summer? Um, so we have 14, so we've got 10 um, full time and four temporary. I thought you'd have more than that in the summer. Yeah. Them boxes are empty and I'm a bit disappointed by that. I thought it was going to be something like really important because it's like the biggest box, but it's just for show. Just finished for the day now, just followed the booms up. We've got some bits of rain still on the window, which is great. Also, Chris Packham on Twitter today. I mean, there's lots of stuff trending on Twitter today, including tractor porn. But Chris Packham has put a picture of a fence on, saying that protesters were trying to stop a fence mowing a field because there was some birds nesting. Yeah, this is the same guy that thinks glyphosate should be banned and we should all go back to ploughing and working ground like that way. I mean, you can't have it both ways, Chris. If you if you want to protect wildlife, you've got to use chemistry. So, I mean, that guy that was mowing, he could have mowed round and that's not the problem here. The problem is, is you think that you're being clever by saying let's ban glyphosate, but that means that you've got to put more passes through a field which can damage more habitats. So just have a little think about what you're tweeting. That's if he's watching, he's probably not watching, but it's still, I wanted to have a rant about him. This is today's birthday bumper now. So we've got Audrey and Leo Simmons, Alistair Ling and Anne-Marie Cottrell. So thanks for, the, not thanks for watching, it is thanks for watching, but that happy birthday if it's your birthday. Also, if you want to scan that now and see what the bloody bag is up to, it's amazing. Um, I will see you all tomorrow. So yes, thanks for watching. Actually, one last thing. I think I've had bedhead all day. Who agrees? Leave a comment.